This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey everyone, today I'm going to be working on one menu, so it's going to be more coding than usual in this vlog. And I'll get the chance to show you around the codebase a little bit more. Recently, we all created a whole bunch of feature requests on the Discord server, and I feel the obligation to make some progress on that. So one menu for those of you who don't know, is a free window manager for the Mac that I've been working on for a while. So today I was looking at some of the features that I can work on, and one of them is the ability to prevent a window from snapping while being dragged with a mouse if the shift key is pressed. Now this might seem like a random and maybe not so very useful feature, but often we want to move a smaller window around that's just not meant to snap anywhere. So today I'm going to be working on that one. But first a word from Squarespace. I'm hosting the page for one menu over at Squarespace because it's very easy to make changes without having to wrestle with CSS. I'm improving the documentation because I'll be adding new features in the coming weeks, so I want to have it organized a little better. Oh, by the way, make sure to also check out my free wallpapers page, and if you need to host a website for a site project or a landing page for one of your socials, check out the link in the description for 10% off of your Squarespace subscription. Okay, so last time I started working on this mini framework to implement the command pattern, and I've used it for the keyboard shortcuts feature, and there's only one command at the moment. At first I was thinking about adding a second command represented by another enum value, and calling it something like toggle dragging window manager. But then I realized it would be a bit error prone and flaky to simply send the toggle command all by itself, so I added two separate commands. And now as I'm looking at this code, I realized I should have just added a boolean associated value, but at the time it didn't really cross my mind. Probably because I work mostly with Java on my day job and TypeScript in my free time, so associated values are not something that immediately comes to mind. But anyway, I'll clean it up later, the main thing is just to get something working. The window manager itself is controlled by this window manager model, and I've added a new boolean prop to disable dragging. And this then needs to be updated by the new command, but I also need to make sure that I don't actually snap any windows when the property is true. Finally, I updated the preview overlays to show and hide correctly as well, and for this I computed a new boolean from the previous can snap property, which by the way is only true if we have a valid area within which we can snap. Here maybe you'll notice the for each loop is looping over a single snap target, and that's just because I couldn't figure out how to properly fade in and out the animation, because if I put everything in a simple if statement, it doesn't actually play the fade out animation. So if there are any Swift experts in the audience, any advice would be much appreciated. But for now, I was just excited to test it out. And I was pressing the shift key alright, but it wasn't making any difference. The first thing that I tried then was to put some print statements, and they were getting called for all keys except shift and other modifiers. So I resorted to my good old friend ChatGPT. And right away it gave me a fantastic answer. The modifier keys actually fire another type of event which I wasn't checking, so I thought that should be an easy fix. However, after building the app again, nothing. And after looking around the codebase for a few more minutes, I realized that when creating an event tab, which is used to listen to keyboard events, you have to specify a mask which tells the operating system which events you are interested in. And so I added the new flags changed event type and I restarted the app. This finally did the trick and I was so happy with my progress. But now it was time to produce the build and push out the update. I must say I wasn't even surprised that archiving the app didn't work. I think I push updates to one menu once a month or so, and every time I come back to it, something is broken with the build system. But anyhow, I have to go back home now to help cook some food, and later I'll come back to this maybe in a few hours. After wasting some time on the Apple developer portal, I was finally able to export the app. And now again, because of Apple's incompetence, I'm forced to use a custom script to notarize the app, since the built-in notarization feature of Xcode is still broken for me. At this point, there is only one thing left to do. I'm adding the new version of the app to my hard-coded database of app versions, and this data is used by the Automatic Updates API, which the app itself will periodically call to download the latest version and effectively replace itself. So I deployed this new API version to Firebase functions, and with that, the new version of the app is practically live. So if you're watching this and you have automatic updates enabled, give it a try and let me know if it works. Alright, I'll spend some more time to clean up some of the commented out code that I saw earlier, as well as that silly enum value, and if you enjoyed this little coding vlog, make sure to hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.